Hello Year 4 and welcome to your second week of your book study on The Sheep Pig by Dick King Smith. Now I left you last week um, and asked you to read chapters 5 to chapters 8 so hopefully you've done that, hopefully you should now be on chapter 9. So just a, a quick recap, so chapter 5, Fly's teaching Babe to be a pig, um, Ma gets um, injured and she goes back to the flock and um, Babe goes off and visits the sheep and the sheep rustlers come and he saves um, the sheep from the sheep rustlers by making a noise which alerts Mrs um, Hoggett who phones the police um, and Mrs Hoggett and Farmer Hoggett now think that you know Babe's a, a good guy and Mrs Hoggett's really keen that he doesn't get butchered so she's not going to fatten him up for Christmas anymore which is fantastic. Um, so in chapter six we see Fly and Babe um, doing some sheep dog duties but flies really unkind to the sheep she um doesn't really treat them with respect she uses unkind words and she snaps at them um and that the sheep you know she doesn't believe in talking to the sheep because she thinks they're stupid but babe on the other hand is really polite to the sheep and that seems to be working for him they seem to um, have a really good relationship with him. So whilst Fly and the sheep have a no relationship, it's a negative relationship, Babe and the sheep has a, have a yes relationship. They have a positive relationship. And that's all to do with him being kind and polite to them. So Farmer Hoggett has a little think about, hmm, could I use this pig as a sheep pig like a sheep dog? So in chapter seven, we see Babe joining Farmer Hoggett and Fly and going out and, um, you know, training and, and shepherding the sheep and herding the sheep. And, and Fly is quite happy. She's really old, so she's quite happy just to lay in the grass and watch. And Babe takes on more and more of the sheep herding sort of um, aspects of the job. He learns really quickly, though. He's a really quick learner. He's obedient and he listens really well. Um, and Farmer Hoggett wants to take him off to the sheepdog trials just to see, just to let him have a look to see what it's all about. Um, and Fly then explains to him what the sheepdog trials are. Now in chapter 8, Babe continues to train. So Farmer Hoggett set up a course, she, he's training, he's getting faster, but he's not quick enough he's really good with the sheep on the farm because they respect him because he's kind to them but when he comes to do the sheep trials it's going to be sheep that he has never met before so flies worried that he's not quick enough his speed's not fast enough so she helps him out she trains him by making him do loads of running and she tells him that he's got to eat less food which for a pig is quite tricky but he's quite happy to do um and then there's a problem so babe happily you know skips up to the the field where the, the sheep are and there's a bit of a commotion going on the sheep are terrified they're all kind of running around chaotically and and making a, a lot of noise and as he gets nearer and nearer he babe can see that ma is on the floor and he can see that there's blood and that ma has been attacked by two dogs two wolf chasers so it's two sheep warriors and Babe tries to help, so he um, basically protects the sheep and, and, you know, scares off these other sheep worrying dogs. Um, but Farmer Hoggett and Fly then decide to go and join him. But as they arrive there, they're met with this image of Babe leaning over Ma with, who's now unfortunately passed away, with blood on his snout and they jump to a conclusion um and that conclusion has a consequence so before we start today what i want you to do is i want you to read chapter nine and the title of chapter nine is was it babe now remember we've got the the book there as a pdf for you in the google drive to read and while you're reading I, there's something that i want you to think about and this is going to link into our writing for this week we're going to write a, a, a discussion text this week so what does Farmer Hoggett plan to do to Babe? So you can pause me now, go off and read chapter nine and then come back and we'll carry on with the rest of session one. What does Farmer Hoggett plan to do to Babe? Right, so you've read chapter nine. Now we find out that Farmer Hoggett plans to um, destroy Babe because he thinks that Babe has hurt other animals he thinks that he is the cause of Mars death 
So we're going to be writing a, a balanced argument, a balanced discussion this week. Um, and we're going to be thinking about the question at the bottom here, which is, is it right to kill animals? Now, a balanced argument looks at different points of view on one issue. And our issue is, is it right to kill animals? And we've got to provide an argument for, yes, it is right to kill them. And an argument against killing them. No, it's not right. But when we're writing this balanced argument, it doesn't matter our point of view. OK, it doesn't matter if we are for it or against it. We have got to present both sides fairly. We have got to be not biased okay and then in the final paragraph in the conclusion we're going to weigh up both sides of the argument and then we're going to decide which side we agree with so we're not going to give our opinion until right at the end of the bit of writing okay so what makes a good balanced argument or a good discussion well we're going to need an introduction we need those views those opposing views of for and against but we can't just say that we're for it we've got to back it up with some evidence we've got to do you're going to have to do some research we're going to be researching it and looking at why the, the reasons for killing animals and, and providing some supporting evidence for those reasons and against those reasons okay we're going to have to include a mixture of adverbials and some causal conjunctions things like due to the fact that um, this is because, okay, so so join in two parts of a sentence together. We're going to write it in the third person. So that means we're going to use the pronouns such as he, she, they, it, um, and except for the final paragraph, which we're going to write in the first person, but I'll talk about that later. And, you know, because this is a formal bit of text, we know that there's going to be no contractions in there. We know that we're going to have to use some formal debating type language and some technical vocabulary and some technical language. So I'm really looking forward to uh, doing this with you this week. So we're going to have a look at one first. And this one starts with the question, should homework be banned? So we're going to have a look at an example. There's a balanced argument. Um, and, you know, like I said, you might already have an opinion about whether homework should be banned. But wait until you've read both sides of the argument before you decide. So what I'm going to let you do is I'm going to click on those three more slides and I'm going to click onto them and I'm going to let you read them. OK, it could be that you just pause me. You don't need me talking. So you just read. But what I want you to be thinking about is there are some words that are highlighted, that are bolder than others. And I want you to be thinking about those words and, and what type of words they are and why they may have been used. So we're going to move on to the first part, the introduction. So we've got an introduction here um, and the, the first paragraph. So pause me here. I want you then to have a read. And then when you've had a read, we'll move on to the next slide and you can um, read that one as well so hopefully you've read the first one you're going to pause me in a minute so that you can you've got the screen so to be able to read the next one so here we've got the opposing view and the conclusion okay so again thinking about those words that are bold why are they there what are they used what, what are they for um, so you can pause me now and then we'll move on to the next one when you've finished your reading. Oh, we've got a little bit more here now. We've got some more argument and a conclusion. So I was incorrect in the last one. That wasn't a conclusion. That was some more points backed up by evidence. So here we've got the other side of the argument and the conclusion for you to look at. So, should it be banned? What did you think? Which argument was stronger? Was the argument for banning homework stronger? Or against banning homework stronger what I mean by stronger is was there more evidence backing up the yes homework should be banned or no homework shouldn't be banned and did it make you change your mind now I asked you to think about those words that were in bold and that were highlighted and there was a reason for that and we're going to have a look at another example here this is all about should mobile phones be banned in school you can see, can't you, quite clearly that the three titles, the two titles that we've looked at so far have been questions with the correct punctuation. So there are some technical bits of writing that we're going to have to think about. We're going to have to think about those contrasting conjunctions. OK, and we're going to come on to talk a little bit more about these and I'm going to give you some examples of these in a minute. 
but you can have a read through this there is there are there's one example of a contrasting conjunction here which is however there's some formal language here vulnerable to communicating freely considerable debate okay it's formal makes us sound like we're experts and we know what we're talking about there's some debate language in here some argument language no one can deny pupils argue they cite so cite means so they cite the potential risks faced by some children traveling alone so cite just means they um they think that some of the potential risks could be that children so it's an it's an example of an, a potential risk okay and then we've got some supporting conjunctions where we're adding more information we're adding more evidence moreover in addition okay so what I've done is I've put together for you here a word bank and you'll find this word bank in the Google Drive. So when you're writing this week, you can have this with you to help you with those contrasting conjunctions, those supporting ones and that debate language. Right, so this is um, a balanced argument and this is the shapes that we're going to use. And here we are at the start. And here is our reader. And we are going to push our reader through... I'm going to just move myself up there. We're going to push our reader along this journey. We're going to push them through the text. And we're going to start with the introduction. Then we're going to have the for and against argument. And then we're going to end with the conclusion. And then we're going to come to the finish. Remember we're writing about is it right to kill animals? So, to be successful, here's my balanced argument. Normally starts with a question. Okay, we're going to present an argument and information from different, differing viewpoints. We need an opening statement, an introduction. We need those arguments for and against and a conclusion. And here are all the language features we're going to need to include. Conjunctions, third person, impersonal voice, a formal tone and some technical vocabulary. Right, so how are we going to write one? You're going to need a subject and our subject is, is it right to kill animals? And you're going to need to know a little bit more about that subject. Then you'll be able to come up with the arguments for and against. So we're going to need to do a little bit of research. Okay, so what I'm going to need you to do before we come back for session two is I am going to need you to research the reasons that animals might be killed. Okay, and it could be that you do some research um, with your parents' permission and support and, th and they're helping you on the internet. And it, it might be that you just talk to people about the reasons and have that discussion like we would do in a P4C session where we talk about um, what we think and our ideas. So I'm going to stop it for now. That was session one. So you're going to go off and do some research. And when you've done all that, come back for session two.